Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. So what if I told you that I have the key to changing the future? And I know that sounds so extraordinary and out of this world, but I promise you it's not as far out as you think it is. All right, you ready? It's going to be books. I know, crazy. It's insane. But we are going to be bringing books back from the brink. And by the end of this talk, I'm going to convince you on why this is so necessary. So why am I standing in front of you today? As you just heard, I am a second year middle childhood education major, and I have an immense love for reading. Um, I've been reading my entire life, and I can't think of a time where I wasn't reading, except for that time in fourth grade where I boycotted reading for some reason. I don't know what nine-year-old me was thinking. But I was elated to hear that this was going to be a massive topic of conversation in all of my education classes. But what I wasn't so excited to hear was that it was mostly negative. We were talking about the mass exodus of books out of classrooms, whether that was because of budget cuts or personal preference by the teacher. Any books, physical, ebook, audiobooks, any way that you get your literature was just getting thrown out, unfortunately. And so I'm here to convince you that in an age of technological power, when we bring books into our classrooms, we not only positively impact our students' learning, we also teach them how to change their future and in turn ours for the better. So I believe that books have the power to do one of two things. One, they help improve their academic learning and our social emotional learning. And we're gonna start with why books are so important for our academic learning. And so I sent out a survey to whoever wanted to answer it, it was open to the public, and I got about 32 responses in return. A good majority, 78% of those respondents, had said that, yeah, books had totally positively impacted their learning experience, with a minor 21 to 22% saying that they didn't have a good experience. But we'll talk more on that later, so remember that for me. But what I was so excited to see was 100% of my responders had said, yeah, books have a place in the classroom. And they were saying things like, I would be so sad if future classrooms didn't have books, or it's good because books encourage thought, introspection, opinions. And those are really good concepts that we're teaching our kids from K through 12 and even into their college years like me. And so one of my favorite quotes that I got from that survey that kind of wraps up this entire section is, books are very important in classrooms. They're a form of art expression that many ages rely on for education, whether it's learning English or improving their comprehension skills. Which brings me to the other benefits of learning. It aids in learning for our special education students. As a teacher, I have to be prepared to be able to include the rest of my students in class, whether they're performing with the normal people or they're maybe not getting it so easily, but that's okay. If I'm talking about English and they're not quite getting it with my audible teaching, having something in front of them to learn is totally better for them. They can see what I'm talking about on a page. And it also helps model the language for our ELL students, which is our English language learners. I think we can all agree that language has a lot of complicated rules and grammar things. I mean, I'm learning it right now and it's impossible. I've been doing this for 20 years. so. <laughs> but it's a part of what we call our universal design for learning. It's just an inclusive way to make sure every student has equal opportunities for learning. And I think that's so important for something that we're doing in this future. It not only models that curriculum for them, it helps them break down the language into little pieces so they can start firing off different connections in their brain in a different way, just like I was talking about for our special education students. It also helps teach reciprocal standards. So as a teacher, there are a lot of standards that you have to start talking about by the end of the year. I could be talking about, oh, I need to talk about chronology. Chronology. And then we're talking about the rock cycle. That might be hard to do, but if you have a book talking about it, boom, you've just done two things at once, and who doesn't like multitasking? More than teachers. <laughs> so not only are these really good benefits for our students, they are also great for their social-emotional learning. And that's almost debatably as important as their academic learning. And so in the survey, I asked what they took away from reading these books, and they said things like, they helped shape my understanding of the world, and don't conform to what you think is normal because that can be a killer. Or they have a deeper understanding of how the past can affect our future. 
these are really deep topics for these students to be understanding in less than 300 pages. It's taken me 20 years and I still, I still get confused when I think about that. But I think that's so cool that books are able to do that. They help present those difficult ideas in an easy way. I mean, who doesn't like things getting simplified for them? A lot of children's authors have been making children's books discussing topics like racism, romantic preferences, different kinds of families we may see, and they start teaching them as young as kindergarten, so it's not so much of a drastic change when they get older. And it also helps teach positive character traits. I may have a few parents out there who know what it's like to have a toddler, oh, you need to share, make sure you do that, but they don't listen. They're in that point where defy parents. <laughs> But books, if they see a character that they like, they're going to start emulating the style of the character. Oh, my favorite character is really nice. I'm going to be really nice. My favorite character likes to share. I'm going to share. And I mentioned bringing in different types of families and cultural groups. It brings in representation for different groups. In the past 10 years, we've seen an increase in children's books that have a di different culture as their main character. So instead of having you know, your typical white main character, you have a character from China or from India or somewhere in the world, and it's really creating this sense of belonging in classrooms. We stress the idea of classroom culture a lot, and it just makes sure that everyone has a safe space to learn, and I think nobody can learn until they truly feel welcomed and accepted. And there's a really great quote by Dr. Bishop up here, and it's long, so I'm going to give you the gist of it. But basically, books are often windows, mirrors, and sliding glass doors. Books that are windows allow you to see into a different world other than your own. You may have not seen it before, and now you have. Books that are mirrors, they allow you to reflect on your own life. You see something you've experienced. You see a character like yourself. And books that are sliding glass doors allow you to take a step into that new world that you just saw, and you have a higher level of understanding that you didn't have before reading that book. And that's kind of the thesis for this entire presentation. But a lot of people don't really agree with this, unfortunately. And they're saying things like, these topics are too intense for our younger audiences. The kids want technology. They don't want books. And maybe not everybody is able to read. And I totally understand that. And if you think the topics are too intense, I mentioned before, these authors are writing it. So you are having it in layman's terms, pretty much. And kids wanting technology, surprise, we have a cool thing called e-readers and audiobooks. We have our phones. You can download a quick app, read your book. And then the fact that not everybody is able to read, that's what we have UDL for, if you remember what that stands for. But you can take out your e-readers if they're not able to flip the pages, or if they're not able to see, we have audiobooks that they can listen to what's going on, or they can follow along with what we're reading. But one of the biggest things that I've seen as an argument for this topic is books make students hate reading. Ask anybody in my generation, they will probably attest to the same thing that, you know, books, not for me. But there was a common solution that I found in my survey that two things would actually help this problem. One, we need to bring the option of choice in the classroom. We need to let students pick what books they want to read and make it fun for them because nobody likes to read a book that they've been forced to read. As someone who loves to read, not my kind of thing. And then we also need to look into bringing more relevant books into our classrooms. Most of the books that we're reading nowadays have been written 100 years ago in a way different time, but we can learn the same message from reading more modern books. And I completely agree, and I'm so excited so many others think the same thing. So I'm talking from an educator's point of view, and I want to show you what you all can do. I'm talking you and you and so many other people. If you have kids at home, read to your own children, make a habit out of it. Start talk 15 minutes a day, read to your child before bed, and you'll start that cycle of learning before you even know it. Yourself, you can look into movement in, in your community. Educate yourself on this topic. We have these amazing things called cell phones that you can do a quick Google search, check through Facebook or Instagram, and I guarantee most public schools are going to have bills that basically say the exact same thing I've been saying. Just stand up for what you believe in. And maybe read these new and recent books I've been saying so many phrases for. You may not believe me, but if you read it for yourself, you'll start to see why I'm talking so well about this. 
And so I want to leave you with one thought before I get out of here. And I want you to know that it only takes one book. It only takes one book to change the mind of a child. It only takes one book to change the future of a child or student or anything. And it only takes one book to change how you think. So keep reading, bring books back from the brink, and go do something amazing. Thank you.